I normally like to put in a little bit of sugar and a fair bit of... No, say it later. <laughs> Non-Napolitan. Sorry, Adam, you're done. I'll bring it together best I can with a spoon. I like to use the spoon. So non style. It's good, yeah. When that becomes useless, I'll get in with my hands. When they become... <laughs> Let's just put them under a dome, a big bowl, or some other kind of container on each one. Plenty of space to rise. I wish I was there that day. That would have been fun. I would have started playing the drums on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I like to do sometimes is brush the cornice with a little bit. Ah! No. No, 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 no. What are you doing, Adam? Good Johnny, come on. Why are you making a pie? Today we have Johnny Di Francesco, an award-winning pizza chef, Neapolitan pizza chef, who is going to react to Adam Ragusea, no stick Neapolitan pizza. Oh. 70% hydration. 75? Yes. Wow. This guy has 1.5 million views on this video. Are you ready? Yep. What somebody like me would call Neapolitan pizza today is certainly the pizza most directly descended from the original pizza, but today's Neapolitan pizza is really defined, I think, by the daredevil levels of hydration in the dough. Ex Does it look like a Neapolitan pizza to you? No. What people call it Neapolitan pizza then? I think people get mistaken. I think if you've got a, a cornichon or a crust, it's Neapolitan pizza. Mm. Okay, so we're not starting the right way. 75% mm. hydration doesn't mean anything to you? It's, it's, not, it's not a Napolitan pizza, it's 75%. Mm. Soft, sticky dough. It gives you a texture like none other, but it is hard to work with. I'm going to show you a way to make a terrifyingly wet dough that will not stick. <laughs> He's using it on a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? Not necessarily, but you know, if he likes doing it that way, then <laughs> yeah, let's watch it. <laughs> There's no steak. Tear, peel, and tear. A pizza that you'll be able to dress at your leisure and deliver to the oven whenever the fire is ready. I don't have the traditional Italian double zero flour. I've just got a high quality bread flour. We're already starting off wrong. Bread flour. Hmm. Is that a good flour to use for pizza? Well, good for bread. Good for bread? Yeah, good so for bread. So it actually yeah. says bread flour. Yeah, good for bread. But even pizza and bread, that did the same thing? Can you think no, about it? The flour is milled differently. So a bread flour is not recommended to make pizza? Yeah, because then heavy. you get a bready taste. Right. So zero zero is the only way. Zero zero, yeah. Flour here, and whenever I make dough, I usually start with five or six cups of flour. I don't normally weigh things, but to be precise about the hydration, I'm going to get this to around 700 grams. About a tablespoon of normal active dry yeast, which is apparently oh, looks a more than a tablespoon. Oh, nine grams. What is he going to try to do here? That's going to rise so fast. That's like 27 grams of fresh yeast. <laughs> so long. It's a lot. Adam, what are you doing? What's on your mind? Like nine grams. I didn't put in a full spoon the first time there. You could bloom it to be sure that it's still alive first, but I'm feeling lucky. Tablespoon of kosher salt, which is apparently like 15 grams. Now people say you can't put salt and yeast together. In this case, all the dry are in the bowl. Is that a good thing to do? Not really. Well, so, okay, so if we, let's get away from the Napolitan pizza, because yes. he's not making Napolitan pizza, but he's, okay. doing, the, he's doing the hydration of 75%. Yes. The salt should always go at the end. If you're putting the salt now, what with a wet dough of 75%, what will happen is a lot of the, the moisture, the water starts to release at the end of when you're making the right. dough. So it's best to keep the salt near the end so that the dough, being such a high hydration, yes. retains all the uh, water. That's a small but important detail. Yeah. Yeah. I normally like to put in a little bit of sugar and a fair bit of... No, see you later. <laughs> no Neapolitan. Sorry, Adam, you're done. Well, why do we keep putting no, sugar no. in this? Uh, with nine grams of uh, yeast and sugar. Uh... Now, do you agree in adding sugar when you do a made? Like if you have a oven at home, you know, no. a domestic oven, the sugar maybe helps a little no. bit. No, because no. sugar is a false sense of coloring. I haven't seen the final pizza yet, but I can guarantee you there will be no color in this pizza. Two reasons. One. He's put too much yeast, so it's yeah. gonna rise too fast. Yes. Two, he's put sugar, so the yeast is gonna feed off the sugar, meaning that it's gonna even work faster. And so what will happen, it will start to lose the sugars. And it would explode as well? Or? Well, it won't explode, but it's just gonna lose its color, and it's, yeah. He needs to change the heading to non-stick Neapolitan pizza to non-stick pizza. Non-stick pizza, 70% hydration, that's, that's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. 
Neapolitan dough is traditionally just four ingredients, the fourth one being water, and I'm going with 75% hydration. That doesn't mean the dough is going to be 75% water. That would be insane. Is that what it means? You need to understand. Well, that, what's hydration? Well, hydration is, is water versus flour. So how much water are you putting to how much flour? So let's break it down in simple terms. One kilo of uh, flour, you'll put 750 grams of water. That's 75% hydration. Okay. Baker's percentages tell you the proportion of the ingredient relative to the flour content. So I have 700 grams of flour, 75% of 700 grams is 525 grams or milliliters of water. He's done the yes, calculation, that's right. well yep. done. That's like two and a quarter cups, which is about the amount of water I normally start with for a New York style pizza. The difference is I'm not going to add any more flour as I need. I'll bring it together best I can with a spoon. I like to use the spoon. So nonna style. It's good, yeah. Huh? It makes it feel a bit homely. That's all right. Yeah. That becomes useless. I'll get in with my hands. When they be <laughs> become useless. <laughs> become useless. I'm going to go back in with the spoon. I was surprised at how well this worked. Just letting the dough stick to that spoon and using the spoon to stretch the dough up and fold it over on itself. You can really see the gluten web forming there. Do you find this a good technique to you? Not really. Look, when we're doing high hydration doughs, the best thing is to use a mixer. A mixer, okay. Yeah. Too hard by hand. Yeah, and the other thing is you put all the water in at once. So really, you're not gonna, it's not gonna absorb the way you want it to. You, you'll see, if you look at one of my videos where I did a 75% hydration, yes. I add the water very slowly because I require the dough to absorb. Come and watch the Pizza Impala video. Mm. You can see. You yeah, can see that, yep. Yeah. That's put a little bit at a time. Yep. Yeah, it's so interesting. Dough however you want to, there are a million ways. I would probably use my stand mixer if you weren't watching, but this was easy enough for me and it's okay. He's right, he said you'd use a, a mixer, but a lot of people these days do have some type of I mixer at home, so you can, now. yeah. You Even can, a blender you yeah. can use. It doesn't seem quite ready yet. I'm gonna need it some more after it sits under a wet towel for an hour or two. I normally just portion my dough out into greased up bowls and let them ferment in the cold for days. That's super easy, it gets great flavor. I've seen lots of people doing this. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's not Napolitan, again, because let's go back to what the heading of the video is. You wouldn't do that in Napolitan style, but with a, a different style of pizza, you can do this, it's okay. fine. Yeah. But it also gets you a pretty fine bubble structure that is the opposite of what you're trying to achieve with a Neapolitan pizza. The goal here is huge cavernous bubbles. The steam and the elasticity from the water in the dough is probably chiefly responsible for that, but it also helps to do a faster rise at room temperature. What do you think of that? Does it look a good, uh, good pizza to you? It's, it's, a, it's a good structured pizza, but as you can see, see how it's lost its sugars, the dough? You see the color? How do you tell? It's very pale. Yes. So what's happened is this has been cooked, I would say at a low temperature for a long time. And then you can achieve this anyway. Right. It's hard to achieve this on high temperature at a short time. That's and Napoleon pizza is all about short, short, short time, temperature. high temperature. Yes. Here it is at like 90 minutes later. I'm gonna use that wooden spoon again to punch it down and knead it a little more. As I understand it, this is about redistributing the yeast through the dough to bring them into contact with fresh starch to metabolize. With a fast rise, they can easily eat everything in their immediate vicinity and end up just sitting there in their own waste products. Yuck. Alrighty, here's where things get a little bit unconventional. I'm gonna lay out a couple of big sheets of parchment paper. Ooh, this is tech very modern. If, if tech from what I can see, because the dough is 75% hydration, first of all, he's not gonna be able to use the Neapolitan technique as the video says it's Neapolitan pizza. I believe he's going to stretch the pizza on the paper and put the paper in the oven and then take the paper out. Is that what he's gonna do? I don't know. I haven't seen the video. Parchment this paper. is what I this is what I believe is going maybe to. Maybe he's going to teach us something new that we don't know, and maybe we're going to change the way we make the Napoleon uh, pizza. It's, this is not new, but this is not Napoleon pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Ice, but certainly the easiest way to portion a dough this sticky is to snip off some with scissors. I'm just trying to snip off one fourth of it and down on the parchment. It does not matter that it is not a round, smooth ball. If you want your pizza to be. You always say that we need to make the dough ball smooth, not cracks. Yeah. So, do you agree with what we said? No, because there's no structure. Is the, the, the gluten will, will form better in a dough ball um, and you need it to rise. But from what I said before, I believe he's not even going to allow, he's going to allow this to rise on the paper and then he's going to tap it out. 
that's my prediction of, of so it's not gonna be a refined pizza uh, no, no, no. it'll be very rough yeah base and a lot of water to drink to drink for the next few days yes be a clean circle you can kind of tidy up the edges a little bit but don't try to unstick the dough from the paper they are permanently i'm just sorry i'm sorry for you to watch this i don't want to put you in this situation but the thing is if you're not a napolitan pizza chef if you don't know what napolitan pizza is why would you go and share a recipe like that what he's doing now it's very i mean uh, it's like a kid would do that look there's there's many different ways of making pizzas and many different pizzas i understand i'm only looking at this now as a a person that would google napolitan pizza and would this be a napolitan pizza recipe no no everything else he's doing can work there's no no right or wrong way when you want to experiment but i just believe people need to stop using the words neapolitan or napoletana or non -nap or non -nap non -nap recipe. recipe or any of this and just say this is a different style of pizza a different method that you may be able to do at home um, yeah. and, and you may enjoy it it's yes. fine but yeah. it's not napolitan bonded now and that's the idea I'll snip off another one and make sure I've got it a good distance away from the first one. In a pizza shop, they would put these in giant bins where they can rise and spread outward without merging into their neighbors, but I don't have anything like that in mind. Do you agree with what he said? No. Well, what are you trying to say? He's saying it, normally when you make your dough balls and then you put them into your dough uh, buckets. He said bins, but it's dough buckets. But you let them rise for a period of time. Otherwise, uh, all the rest will ask for water. Exactly. You need to have lots of bottles of water. Exactly. You want to sell more wine than water, right? Yeah. Wow. My house. Again, I normally rise in oiled containers, but that requires you to deflate them a little bit on the way out. So I used this technique before mm. uh, in the container with the oil. And the best part about it is that you don't have to touch it the way it's doing. Mm. You just need to put the container upside, upside down, down and it will come out. Yes. Go straight in the it's, semolina. Especially if you got oil. Shred it. And it's beautiful. That's mm. the reason why you put oil. That's and right. And then you spread it. Yep. What he's doing now with the hand, isn't he killing the dough? He's taking all the gases out. So what's the point to put in the container with the oil? I don't no know. No point. We need to ask him. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> you write a comment below, let us know. Why do you do this? Especially if it's a wet, sticky dough, you need that gas for Neapolitan-style pizza. I've got to cover these. He said you need the gas. Yeah. But where did the gas go? I'm not sure. He's saying from the other one, taking it out, he's going to get rid of the gases. But he's saying with the current one on the paper, it's going to create gases. But I want to see, I'm very interested to see where he's going to create these gases. And in what time, what time frame. <laughs> These with something or they'll dry out. I can't put a towel or a plastic wrap on them that it sticks. So let's just put them under a dome, a big bowl or some other kind of container on each one. Plenty of space to rise. I wish I was there that day. That would have been fun. I wanted to be there right now. I would have started playing the drums on them. Yeah. <laughs> and they won't dry out. How long? A few hours until they spread out a lot and go very puffy. A few hours. I mean, you put lots of yeast in there, so it, yeah. If we go really quickly through Napolitan pizza dough, it is, the dough is, is made, it is then rested for at least two hours before we go on to the next process. Now, if he's saying that he's made the dough, left it on the paper, and it's only for the next few hours, is he going to cook it? I'm interested to see. Yeah, let's see. Okay, our dough has successfully gone burger. Now I'm just gonna flour the top and- Nothing to say? Why? Because he said it's a few hours. This dough is, is, is rising this fast because of the amount of yeast and sugar he's placed in the dough. And the container was touching the dough as well, so you, hmm. what happened it's there? Take, well, some of the structure would have, uh, would have come apart. So now he's stretching the dough on, right on the parchment paper. Yeah. In my hands and then push onto the center. The name of the game with Neapolitan pizza is flattening and stretching the inner disc of dough with... Okay. Hmm. He's not using the professional technique like you do, like I can't even do what you do, yeah, it's yeah, too yeah. Be hard. So in a way, he's not touching the edges. Mm. He's not that bad what he's doing. And the pizza, to be honest, it looks soft. No, it is soft, it's 75% hydration. It has to be soft. Okay, it doesn't matter if it didn't rise for too long. The problem, the <laughs> Sorry to put you in this position. The problem is, is we haven't allowed enough time to mature. We're missing out one important part of, of the dough rising process. The yeast will make your, you can put a lot of yeast and you can let a, a, the dough rise within one hour, two hours, no problem. When I look at when we're making a dough, there's a few fundamentals. One, 
How long am I allowing my dough to rise? Am I allowing all the process to happen? The rising, the maturity. Here, yes, we have rising, we have no maturity. Thirdly is how healthy is this pizza going to be for the people that are going to eat my pizza? These are three very fundamental uh, questions you should ask when you're making a pizza dough. A pizza dough. A lot of people think we just slap everything in a bowl, yeah, mix away, put the yeast, let it rise. Oh, it's risen, okay, let's make the, the bread or the pizza, no. If it was that... It's a science behind there it. There is a science behind it, yeah. Yeah. Without deflating the outer ring, the cornice or cornicione in Italian. So I don't want to touch that at all. Normally people would work with a dough this wet in a huge pile of flour to keep it from sticking. This is already stuck to the parchment and that's just fine. Embrace it. I'm never going to lift this off the paper. I'm just going to nudge it outward on the paper. As long as you keep your fingertips dusted in flour, this should be really easy. It takes a minute, but it does not take a practiced hand. Just nudging the dough outward. Do you see how he's pushing? He's yes. not pushing air. All he's doing is creating a rim. This is not really creating a cornicione. A real cornicione is built from the gases. This is, he's, all he's done is flattening and making the rim look like there's a cornicione. It's, uh, it's cheating. It's faking it. Well, it's, uh, yeah, pretty much. Also, you didn't turn the pizza. It's not a bad thing to do. Like, you don't even want to turn the pizza, you know, when you do the slap and... Well, he's saying, outside. you know, I'm not putting a lot of flour, which is a good thing because we don't want too much flour yeah. when, you, when you're dealing with dough. Um, but he's just letting it stick on the parchment paper. So, so I think my I now. think my prediction is he's going to cook it Straight with the paper the and yeah. then he'll take the paper out. That would be, it doesn't get stuck if you cook it yeah. in the parchment, right? No. no. You don't have it'll, paper it'll, stuck it'll, it'll uh, detach. Okay, when you cook it. Mm. Without deflating the cornice. And guess what? If you tear a hole in this dough, it does not matter with this method. Not one bit. So you're saying it's dry. It's no, like, not not going to be like uh, very crunchy. No, not, not, not so much that it's dry, but there's, all it's going to do is be like a bread. Right. It's going to be like a bread cornicione. Not, not, not full of gases. Do you think it's also good to do with the bread flour you use? No, it's the, it's a technique. So even if you use a zero zero flour, would and it you be do the that, same? it's a technique. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Each of these will only make about a ten inch pizza for one or two people. That's because a lot of the dough mass with a Neapolitan pizza doesn't get stretched and topped. It gets. I feel like he knows a lot about Neapolitan pizza. He keeps saying Neapolitan pizza. I mean, from me who watch this, I think he's an expert. I find like he knows what he's talking about. Look, he knows how to sell the, you the... Neapolitan pizza. I guess. <laughs> Again, we should. We shouldn't, we shouldn't put that word in it, but he yeah. should have just said pizza. And you know, it, like I said, the final product might be, might be good. It, you know, people might enjoy it, but we don't want to make people be, be mistaken by something, that by something not. that's not. It's like, yeah. it's like uh, Parmigiano and Parmesan. It's a completely different product. It, yeah. It's two different products, oh, but yeah. why do, uh, you know, people, uh, they are, yeah, this is Parmesan. I don't want to buy a Range Rover and inside I have a Toyota interior yeah, exactly. and, and, and engine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Fluffed up. Also, when it's time to top these, you have to be especially conservative. The bread is the main event with Neapolitan style. We don't know what tomato sauce it is. No, it looks like know. a passata. Yeah. Well, it could be... Could be all right, yeah. Anything, yeah. yeah. we don't know yet. The little sauce. What is that sauce? Well, traditionally, it'd be canned San Marzano tomatoes. I say just use the best canned tomatoes you have wherever you live, and I'm consistently impressed with these. Though when I work with whole canned tomatoes, I prefer to lift them out of their canning liquid. You can crush those by hand, but I... He doesn't like to use Oh, that. no. No to the oh, liquid he's not using, no, or no to the blender? No, no to the blender. <laughs> oh, my God. He watched this suffer. Oh. oh, I broke my heart. Squash by hand. Squash by hand. So that direction know. is that what you do? You yeah, it? or you can pass it through a mooly. Right, yeah, you're more gentle. You're more gentle. We don't break the seeds. Here we're, seeds have to be here there. we're crushing all the seeds. Even though he's not using San Marzano and he's using a good quality tomato, yes. as soon as you uh, blend, You've destroyed the tomato. Also, what you're doing is uh, you're aerating that product. So, you know. No. And do you agree in leaving the juice in the can? You don't want to have the juice together with the tomato? No, you can put the juice. Juice is good. Juice is fine, yeah. And the canning liquid. The liquid tends to be kind of bitter and it would thin out the sauce. I say skip. The liquid is not bitter. It is the seeds that you've just crushed, Adam, that is bitter. <laughs> not the liquid. I'll just put in a good amount of olive oil and a little salt. No pre-cooking, that's pretty traditional. When I make... Is it traditional? 
we don't cook the tomato. It's a traditional too. We don't put, we don't, okay. So really when, if we want to talk about the traditional for the yeah. Napolitan, depending on uh, what we're talking about, if we go through the rules of an STG, the tomato is just hand crushed, it's put on the pizza and salt is then placed on the pizza. That's, if you have to. That, yeah. Some people you replace salt with pecorino. Is that yeah, you can. Up? Yeah, you, uh, can do that. you can do that if, if you want some pecorino on the pizza. But part of the STG rules, the real uh, governed, no. No. Yeah. New York style pizza, I don't salt the sauce because it gets covered in tons of salty cheese, but that's not what's going to happen here. Neapolitan style uses fresh mozzarella, not the extra dried and fermented low moisture stuff invented here in the States. The thing with fresh stuff is that you can't use very much. I'm glad you said that. I hate good. shredded mozzarella, yeah. so bravo, Adam. Good on you, you Adam. That was clothes. good, yep. So that it's filled with water, and it will turn the pizza into a kiddie pool if you put on too much cheese. You can slice it, but I like just tearing off chunks. That's it. Last thing I like to do sometimes is brush the cornice with a little... Ah! No. No, 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 no. No, no it's a no-no. No, no. no, it's a no, no. no, no. We stop We're not making a pie. What are you doing, Adam? Yeah. Johnny, come on. Why are you making a pie? No. Come on, come on. You can watch Johnny's video, how to make Napolitan pizza. It's so easy. And then you do, you do this, come on. Mm. Remove this video from YouTube. Do a new one. The oil, that gets you a nice golden brown finish, but not everybody is into it. The golden brown finish is because the sugar's already dead, so the oil will compensate and try and make it. It, make it brown. Oh, and basil, some people put it on now. I prefer to put it on after the pizza bakes. And how do we bake it when it's hopelessly stuck to the parchment? Arts and crafts time. I'm just gonna cut the pizza out onto a now. <laughs> you need the music for the kids. <laughs> Custom parchment round. It's gonna bake on the paper. You wanna minimize the excess around the edge though, because that'll burn. And there you go. Yeah, it would burn. I sure. It would burn. I did yeah. use baking paper at home. Yeah. And I did something like this. And I did, it does burn. Yeah. Because eventually you want to use the, the broiler, which is the grill. But he's going to, to cook. He's going to start it on that. He's going to burn it. Yeah, so he takes it out. Instead of dressing that pizza on a giant pile of semolina and then running it to the oven to slide it in before it sticks, we have all the time in the world. We could dress all four pizzas and take them outside. This is particularly advantageous when you're working with natural fires, which kind of proceed on their own schedules. Look at that slide on there. Now, if I'd put in enough wood before, this stove could easily hit the like 800 Fahrenheit 425C, where a lot of people like to do Neapolitan pizza or even higher. I've actually found that I prefer maybe 650 Fahrenheit, 340C. I'm a man who. I would never do that in a wood fire oven. I would never put parchment and bagel. Likes his cheese to be brown, and if you want it to brown, you gotta give it time before the crust burns. Neapolitan pizza doesn't have brown cheese. No hence the more moderate temperature. Still way hotter than I can get with my oven inside. That's important for getting all the water in the dough to steam out and- If you look at the edges, they don't look bad. That's from the oil. The, the color is coming from the oil. Blow up some big bubbles. If you're nervous about shimmying that out with the peel, nobody says you can't grab it with some tongs. Back in the house and now we can put in our basil and let that- God, um, can you remove the basil, <laughs> please? It's all burned. It's gonna make me sick. I don't wanna watch this. How do we get the parchment off? Just like that. It's that easy. Crunch right through that bubble there. That elasticity and steam from the wet dough creates this pastry-like consistency. These glassy layers, almost like phyllo. Pretty special. Here's one where I did not brush the cornice with oil, by the way. It's just a different effect. More of a powdery finish from the... See the one with pale. no oil is pale? This is because the sugars in the yeast have died because it worked too fast. So someone might say, oh, I'm gonna use oil from now on so I make it look better. It's a way to cheat. I don't know if it's cheating. I think it's a waste of time. Take you longer. The flavor is the same. It's just the look changes. You never look. Maybe you get a little bit of a crispiness. oily, maybe crispiness taste, yeah. Power, take your pick. Now, I'm sure you've been wondering, does the parchment somewhat inhibit heat transfer to the bottom of the pizza? So yes. interesting how the basil died. You see the basil mm. is not cooked, but it burns. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that because the pizza is too hot? You should have cooked it's, the basil. It's in the oven long. This this pizza stayed in that oven for a long time. Okay, not not less than two minutes. No, you will never have basil burn like this in an oven that is hot and cooking within that sixty to ninety seconds. So that's not pleasant to eat. Well, if in that case, a lot of people at home, if you're cooking in your in your own oven, like in in, in a conventional oven, yeah. 
Th then just put the basil on after. Yeah, because okay. the residue heat will give some of the aroma. Yes, I think it does, a little bit. That's why I don't normally do this. But look, we still got some leopard spotting there. For the convenience and the peace of mind, I think- Mushroom, hey buddy, good job at the book. What do you think of it? I'm sorry, Johnny, to put your tunes. I know you don't want to watch it. You have nothing to say, do you? No. That's a fine trade-off. If you're a pro, forget it. But if you're like me and you're just dipping your toes into these super high hydration doughs, I say bake and build on paper. Makes it easy. What do you think? Look, it looks like a pizza that, you know, you can enjoy. Is it Napolitan, like we said, no. Are there a couple of things that he can maybe do a little bit better? Yeah, of course, especially with high hydration dough. There's ways to handle it where you don't need to use parchment paper, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, yeah, and easier to stretch and retaining the gases even more, allowing the gases to rise. This was this was a really quick dough. You know, this would have been a couple of hours. Yeah, done the same day. Yeah. Done the same day. Um, but again, the effects are what can happen after you eat it um, is where people don't realize. The drinking and drinking and yeah. drinking. Yep. Mm. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Thank you, Johnny, for being here oh, and yeah. sharing your expertise. And thank like you, Adam. Said, Adam, we can make your thank pizza. You. We'll try and recreate yeah. it. Well, I try. I don't give it to Johnny. Maybe it's nice, but it's not Napolitan. So do not call it Napolitan. Yeah. Call it Adam Pizza 75% hydration. Yeah. And maybe that way, Johnny wants to try too, because it's not Napolitan. That's he right. makes Napolitan pizza. So let Johnny share the Napolitan pizza recipe with you, with everyone. So thank you, Johnny. Thank you, thank everyone. You. I'll see you in the next Vincenzo's plate video recipe or reaction video. Write a comment for Johnny, please. E ora si mangia. Not this pizza. No. Johnny's pizza. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao.